Hi, you guys. Welcome back. Um, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about beginner sewing machines. So I have been teaching in-person sewing lessons for a little more than a year now. And I feel like every time I get a new student, they bring in a new and different machine. So I've been able to test out a whole bunch of beginner friendly machines. And I want to talk you through some of my favorites, as well as if you're going to be shopping for one, what to look out for, what you need, and also what you absolutely do not need so you don't end up wasting your money. So let's take a look at some of these models and help you find a sewing machine. Okay, first of all, let's discuss the different types of machines that you're gonna find out there. Obviously we have a home sewing machine, we have combo machines, and then we have a serger. Let's um talk about sergers first because they are a completely different beast. A serger is a type of machine that you're going to use if you get really into garment sewing and you care about how your garments look on the inside. So if you look inside of whatever garment you're wearing right now, assuming that it is store-bought, you're going to see like a like a cut edge and then a whole bunch of threads wrapping around that cut edge. That's what a serger does. So if you get really into garment sewing, we can talk about sergers, but this video is just about sewing machines. So next up, let's talk about combo machines. You'll find combo machines for sewing and embroidery, also sewing and serging. I'm not a huge fan of the combo machines. I find that they end up being really clunky to use. It's difficult to take like um, the embroidery portion of this off and bring it back to the sewing portion. And I feel like it's like neither one of the sewing or embroidery machines end up being very good. I would rather get a good sewing machine and a good embroidery machine and just have two rather than to try and make one machine be really good at both things. So with that said, let's talk about sewing machines. There are two types of sewing machines. One is mechanical and one is computerized. So the mechanical sewing machines are not going to have an LCD screen. Instead, you're going to see a whole bunch of knobs and little, I don't know what those things are called. They're little sliders, I guess. Um, these are the most basic of sewing machines. They are going to do the fewest, they're going to have the fewest bells and whistles, but sometimes fewer bells and whistles is better. So if you look at this one, okay, wow. Okay. Zooming in. Okay. So you can see here, these are your stitch options. There aren't very many, but for a lot of projects, you probably don't need a lot of stitches. In fact, I find on my sewing machine with the amount of sewing that I do, I use maybe, let's call it 10. It's probably less than 10, but let's call it 10. Um, so don't be fooled by the sewing machines that say they have 5,782 um, stitches. They're probably not, you're probably not going to end up using them as much as you think. The ones that I think you need are a one step buttonhole. One step being the picture of the buttonhole is just one picture. If it has one that has numbers, like um, this bottom portion being number one, this left portion being number two, this top portion being number three, and this right hand portion being number four, a four step buttonhole machine is just not cutting it. It's just not a good buttonhole. It might work for crafts, but it really, really doesn't do much for garment sewing. I would not feel comfortable securing myself into a garment with a four-step buttonhole. Next up, you have your straight stitches, okay? So these are straight stitch. I think we have some triple stitches in here. This is a straight stitch on the right hand, um, the furthest to the right of the machine's width, which we'll talk about here in a second. Same thing for these three. So this is the middle of your needle's width, and this is the far right. I do use the straight stitch and the triple stitch often, and I do move my needle often. So having those two as an option is really good. If you find a machine that only has the middle option, that's okay, not the best, but you can get by with a lot with just having your one needle position. Then we have your zigzag stitches and then all the widths here, um, you're gonna be using that for all kinds of applications. So all machines have a zigzag stitch, so this is great. And then you're getting into 
This is a triple zigzag. I never use that. This is kind of like a decorative situation. Never use those. Blind hems, I will use those if I am altering a pair of trousers or making a garment that I don't want the hem to be visible, I will use this. But that's relegated exclusively to garment sewing. So if you're not planning on sewing clothes, you don't need this either. So I never use this or this or this or this or this or this. <laughs> okay, so on this whole thing, I'm going to be using one, two, three, four, maybe five stitches on all the garments that I've ever sewn. Um, stitch length here is important. My machine goes up to a five. These are in millimeters, okay? So the difference between a four millimeter and a five millimeter for a basting stitch, which you'll come across some in your sewing, um, is really negligible. You don't have to have a machine that goes up to five. Most machines are only ever going to go up to a five. So the fact that we have a four, that's fine. It really truly is fine. Um, okay, next, let's talk about the top of the machine because you're going to have something here. This is the tension dial. I tell people to never, ever touch the tension dial, no matter what the internet tells you, but that's a conversation for another day. Other than that, it doesn't look like we have any adjustments to width at all. So all you can do width-wise is put it in the middle or on the far right, and trust me, it's not perfect, but that is good enough. So here is Brothers Mechanical Machine. Okay, so on Brothers Machine, you can see we have, what is that, 10, 20, 30, 40, or 37 stitches. It does have a one-step buttonhole machine. Um, it also has Brothers version of an automatic needle threading system. Some people find that to be really difficult to use. You have to really practice at it. You have to really practice at it. Okay, let me move myself over here to where I'm out of the way. So this is about the product. And on this one, they're not going to give us a great photo, but you can see right here, there's on the Singer machine, they only had this dial for the tension. This one is going to be width and this one is going to be length. I'm pretty sure, okay, so the length I'm sure goes up to four, again, on the mechanical machine, maybe, maybe five. But this also has a width adjuster. So you can slide that dial left to right and it'll go the span of the width of the machine. This is how fast it sews. You'll never notice that. Um, the sewing feet, we're going to talk about a free arm. That means that you can take this little thing off right here. This little part slides off. And then you have almost like an arm that you can put circular seams circular like think about like a hem or like a sleeve or a collar you can slide the whole thing over this and it makes it much easier to sew it basically goes all around and underneath your sewing machine rather than just coming from the side and up on top the other thing that we did not talk about was accessory feet so you will need some accessories um, to sew depending on what you plan on sewing. I wanted to see what feet this one includes, um, but let's go to the Singer one since that's just easier for me to navigate the website anyways, um, because we can talk about which feet you actually need. So you're going to get like a, a regular sewing foot, the one you're going to use most of the time. And then you're also going to get additional feet. Again, let me move myself. All right, so you're going to get a general purpose foot. You're going to get that buttonhole foot to do the one-step buttonhole. You're going to get a button sewing foot. Now, this is a separate foot that you use to sew on the button. I don't love sewing my buttons on by machine. I'd rather do it by hand. I find that they're more sturdy that way. But if you're wanting to take shortcuts, you can try the button, sewing the button on by machine. You don't have to have the foot to do it. I don't know. This one is not that important to me. If your machine doesn't have that, I think you're fine. A zipper foot is helpful to install a zipper. Um, and the Singer Sew so Easy foot. I wonder what that is. I have no idea what that means, to be honest. Um, bobbins, like I talked about, a darning plate that's going to help you if you want to like alter, not alter things, but mend things. The darning plate is helpful. You don't have to have the darning plate to do that though. So we can scratch that one out. A pack of needles, you're going to buy that on your own. You can scratch that out. An auxiliary spool pin is going to allow you to, 
and I scroll up here, is gonna allow you to see how there's one spool pin here. This is gonna give you an additional spool pin so that if you want to load a bobbin without having to undo your needle thread, you can do that. Nice feature, not 100% necessary. Um, and then everyone, every single machine is gonna come with a seam ripper and lint brush, a spool cap, and an edge slash quilting guide. Mm, not super necessary, no matter what you're sewing. Okay, so that is the Singer version. This is the Janome, um, the Janome Sewist. I worked at a um, fabric store that sold Janome's. I sold, I taught lessons there, so I got to play on all their demo machines. I loved this little Sewist machine almost more than I loved their mechanical machine, which we'll look at um, when we get to, I'm sorry, their computerized machine, which we'll get to whenever we talk about that. But this one has one step buttonhole foot, <laughs> what am I saying? One step buttonhole. We've got the straight stitch down the middle and this moves the straight stitch to the left, whereas the other one was on the right. So a little bit of, you know, same but different. Zigzag stitch and then a whole bunch of stitches you're not going to use. And then here's your triple stitch again and then a whole bunch of stitches you're not going to use. This one does have a um, buttonhole or a needle threader, which is helpful. Um, but we've got... So all of this is the same. That's all fine and good. They're making these options all sound like they're super special. They're not. They're pretty common. Um, every machine's going to have an extra presser foot lift. Here's the maximum stitch width. Okay, so it is five. Built a needle threader, the free arm. Again, this thing comes off and you're able to sew in the round here. And then maximum stitch length is four millimeters. You're going to get a buttonhole foot, a transparent buttonhole foot, screwdriver, zigzag foot, blind hem, foot control, lint brush, zipper foot, bobbin, hard case, over edge foot. Yeah, all of these are pretty standard. Um, the only thing that if I saw in a machine that would make me get that machine over any of the other ones would be an invisible zipper foot, but... I don't think those are going to come standard, but they're not expensive to buy just on Amazon or whatever. Okay, so computerized machines. Let's look at Brothers. Okay, so this one has, the differences are, you can see, a lot more automation. Okay, so this is going to have a button that you can push. If you don't have your pedal plugged in, this will sew for you automatically without you having to push the pedal. You just push the button and it sews. This is your back stitch. And the other, this one here is your needle up or down. So being able to push a button and have your needle go automatically to the position it needs to go and then vice versa, pushing it and having it go to the top position is really helpful. If you get a mechanical machine and you don't have this, you'll just do it manually and you'll just get a feel for what's all the way down and what's all the way up. Not 100% necessary, but a nice feature to have. One thing that I do think make or breaks people's decision in computerized versus mechanical is this thing here. This here will allow you to adjust the speed. So if you move this all the way to the left, it sews very, very slow, which is really, really great for kids because you don't want a kid like pedal to the metal and like, you know, either get freaked out or hurt themselves or anything else. If you have a kid that you know is a little bit like wild and crazy, you might want to get them this one. I will say though, within probably, I don't know, by the end of their like second or third project, they're already moving this up. They're already getting a feel for how it works, um, getting a feel for how the pedal works, I mean, and they're learning how to control their speed on their own. Same thing with adults who are a little bit more cautious, by the end of their like first or second project, they're already like, okay, this is really painfully slow. Let's move this up. By the end of the first month or two of sewing, almost everybody's sewing at the fastest speed. You just get used to it. So, you know, it, it depends on how much you want to ease them into it, whether this is a make or break for you. Okay. And then we have a ton of stitches here. Again, all computerized machines are going to have a lot more stitches built in. The main thing that is different between mechanical and computerized is that this one's going to have a lot more buttonhole foot or buttonhole options. So you can see all of these rectangles here are different buttonholes 
different buttonhole shapes. Okay, but other than that, all of the stitches are relatively the same. And that's it in terms of the stitch selector. Then in terms of um, stitch width and stitch length, all of that is computerized here. Um, and you can move it up by increments of half millimeters. So you're able to get a lot more of a precise selector when it comes to stitch length and width. Like on a top stitch, you would line this up with the seam and then you'd move the needle to match the place where you want this top stitching to be visible. Does that make sense? So you get a lot more precision when it comes to where you move your needle. Let's look at the Singer computerized. So again, a whole bunch more stitches, but mostly it's just um, extra blind hems and extra buttonholes. You can see all the buttonholes down here. This one happens to have an alphabet. Um, the alphabet could be cool. Again, it's going to be very small, so it's not going to be something you're going to want to like, you know, display a huge name. But if you wanted to put like initials somewhere, you know, to notate that it's yours and it's handmade, that could be kind of cool. Here's the speed selector. Here's needle up, needle down. Here's your back stitch, and here's your automatic sewing, like without the pedal. Let's see this. Okay, so this one's going to come with these feet. Let me move myself again. So this is that um, extra spool holder. This is your seam ripper. This is what holds your thread onto the spool. This is your cleaning brush. This is your screwdriver. This is a zipper foot. This is a blind hem foot. This is a clear um, foot if you need to see, like if you were top stitching or something and you wanted to be able to see through the foot, you could do that. And then this is your buttonhole foot here. So those are the options. This is a, this just indicates that we, it's a top loading bobbin, which is, it's easier in that it's one fewer step. The front loading bobbin is not harder. It's just one extra step. So don't be dissuaded by front loading or top loading, in my opinion. Okay, and then the Janome one is called the Janome Loft. And you can see it comes with the stitch selector on the Loft machine is like a separate card that like sticks into here somewhere. Let's see if they give us a picture of that card. No, they don't. That's so not nice. Um, anyways, you do have all the same stitches that every of those, all the other ones we looked at with the additional um, blind hems, additional buttonhole feet. You have the speed selector, needle up, needle down. This one is unique to Janome. It actually is going to tie a little knot at the end of your seam. So it's a way of ensuring that your seams are not going to come undone. And then backstitch and then your start stop button. Um, over here we have, this is the selector for the stitch. And then you'll move this up or down um, depending on if it's length or width that you're looking at. It makes a lot more sense when the screen is on. But um, it also has a top loading bobbin. And then feet wise which include zipper foot, buttonhole foot, satin stitch foot, and a zigzag foot. Um, I use my regular foot, my zipper foot, my invisible zipper foot, and my blind hem foot the most. But yeah, so those are three different companies, six different machines, um, and what I look for when I'm going to buy mine. All right, if you cannot find some of these exact models, don't worry, you are armed with a checklist of things to look for and also things that you don't necessarily need. So try and focus on that more so than the exact models that I featured today and I guarantee you will be very happy with your brand new sewing machine. So that's gonna do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.